Hey everyone, it's Jenna, and in this video, I want to talk about my first three years as an HTML email developer. So it's been a while since I put out a video. I think it's been a year or two since I released a video on this channel, so I just wanted to say what's up i hope everyone's doing good let me know down in the comments how you're doing and um i kind of warned people that i wasn't going to be putting out content as much for this channel i've really just been busy in the past two years building my business and um just doing other things i actually started two other youtube channels uh one of them i think i'm gonna continue with and i'll leave that down in the description, the channel is more about art and stuff like that. So I've been working as an HTML email developer for the past three years now. And in this video, I want to describe what a day in life on the job is like for me, what has changed, um, how my job is now compared to how it used to be. And I'd like to describe it in half. So the first year, and a half as I was working as a developer coding emails. I had a lot of help from one of the web developers and he would help me out with some of the more difficult campaigns that deal with implementing customer data. So for example, like an abandoned car campaign or sometimes we run campaigns that um, is personalized to the customer, meaning if the customer went to the website and is interested in product A, B, and C, we want to send them an email that shows the customer the products that they're interested in A, B, and C. To do that, you're going to need a more difficult templating language called RPL, which stands for Responses Programming Language. So in the beginning, when I first started working there, I say the first year, maybe year and a half, I really didn't deal with a lot of coding and RPL. I was mainly taxed with the more simple task of creating promotional emails. Promotional emails are pretty simple. What the graphic designer basically does is he will go into Photoshop and he will design the promotional email. And a promotional email is just basically like, hey, we have a sale, everything's 30% off, it expires at midnight, come, you know, shop on our website. That's basically the gist of a promotional email. And they're pretty simple to code, at least at my company, they're pretty simple to code because it's really just taking an email that the web, that the um, graphic designer will slice the images out. And I'm really just taking the images that he sliced out of Photoshop and I am coding them into my HTML table. Pretty simple, it's pretty mundane. I'd say the second half of the job, the where I'm at now, the previous year and a half, I've been working for the company. The web developer is no longer working on email and I became the sole web, not web, the sole email developer. I'd say about four months ago, we finally hired a second email developer, but for about two and a half years, I was the only email developer and I was responsible for promotional email. And now that I'm getting more difficult templates, I am now responsible for learning RPL and implementing and leveraging RPL, which RPL is a programming language that is based on Apache FreeMarker. It's a programming language that basically nobody uses. So whenever I run into an issue with this programming language, going to Google and looking for help is not an option. I do have a couple people that I can go to for help in an email marketing 
Slack group called Email Geeks. And there are a few other developers there who code, who code using RPL and they're, I'm able to go to them if I run into issues or if I need help or I'm able to ask the web developer who used to help out with emails. He will sometimes help me with RPL. My initial reaction when I was learning RPL is I don't understand this. This makes no sense to me. And it just, it was really, really difficult for me to learn. When you work in email marketing, depending on what ESP you go with, you might have to learn a templating language. I know another templating language that some email developers use is Liquid. And Liquid is, I believe, also used by Shopify. And it's a templating language that you're able to take customer data and implement it into the campaign to create more dynamic campaigns, such as an abandoned cart campaign. So if I go to the website and I'm browsing the website and I see a product I like and I add it to my cart, and I go through the checkout process and I put in my email and I go through the checkout process. I'm like, damn, shipping is expensive. And I'm like, F this site. <laughs> and I end up bailing from the website. If the website's set up properly, you're probably gonna get an abandoned cart message saying like, hey, we noticed you were browsing this product. You added it to your cart, but you didn't check out. Here's an email letting you know, hey, if you want to continue your checkout, click here and you can do that. That's basically what an abandoned cart email is. And to create emails like that, you have to leverage customer data. There has to be a database where this information is stored based on the subscriber and based on what products the subscriber is interested in based on what products the subscriber went to the website and abandoned. There are all these factors that come into play and to create these campaigns I had to learn RPL. It took me about three years and about $450 to become a self-taught web developer, email developer, sorry, I keep saying web developer. And one of the things that I did not anticipate, and you don't, I don't think enough people realize this when they're learning how to code, is that when you're working in the real world, things get real when you're learning a programming language that you have no choice but to learn. You're learning a programming language that there's no tutorials that are walking you through. I didn't view any tutorials on how to build an abandoned card campaign. I didn't view any tutorials teaching me how to implement customer data and create websites that are, create emails that are more dynamic. I didn't go through a tutorial to um, teach me how to create an add to bag button so that when a customer is scrolling through that email, instead of clicking on the product and bring what to the product page, having an add to bag button will automatically add that product to the customer's uh, checkout. I didn't go through any tutorials like this. I had to learn it all on my own. So it's very anxiety inducing. In one way, it causes a lot of imposter syndrome, at least for me. Um, but in another way, it also gives you confidence when you finally do come up with that solution. The amount of times I've been at my desk and I came up with the solution and I literally, like the other day, this project, this issue I've been struggling with for like months, this project that's been driving me crazy, wanting me to pull my hair out. 
and I finally came up with a solution and I screamed yes like on the top of my lungs like my housemates probably heard me they probably think I'm crazy and yeah so that's what my first three years as an email developer has been like um doesn't necessarily mean that you're if you become an email developer this is what your job is going to be like because i have done email development at other companies before even though my role was technically a graphic designer i still coded emails for these companies and these were smaller companies that did not take email marketing seriously at all and for that i was literally just creating promotional emails, which I already told you, is super simple to do. At the end of this video, I'm trying to think what else I left off. I think the lesson I left off is that coding for Outlook is kind of like coding um, what, what developers experienced with Internet Explorer back in the day, where um, you have this ES you have this client, Outlook, that just does not follow any type of protocol at all. And the reason being is Microsoft Outlook uses Microsoft Word as a rendering engine. And that's really a terrible idea and everybody hates them for it. So if you become an HTML email developer, be prepared to create a template that looks great in every single other client, but be prepared for when you look in Outlook, your email is probably gonna look like crap because Outlook sucks a job explaining what it's like to be an HTML email developer. Um, just for the record, because I get X's a lot, I did not take any courses and becoming an HTML email developer. I really just went into it and started developing and started coding. And I did a little bit of coding for other companies when I was working as a graphic designer. And the company I work for took that trust, saw that I did it for other companies and hired me as an HTML email developer. However, one of the most common questions that I do get is where to learn email development. I ex around in the community and I would say that a lot of people seem to really, really like one of the courses from Coding Phase. He's another YouTuber. So if you are interested in learning HTML email development, he does have a course on his website so that you can learn that. I'm going to leave a link for that down in the description and it is an affiliate link and it does help me out, but I have heard that it is a good course. So it's worth checking out if you do want to learn how to become an HTML email developer. And um, yeah, so if you like this video, please leave a like. If you hate it, leave a dislike, that's cool, whatever. Um, leave a comment down below and I will see you next time.